Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of the Bobby Bones Show. We're so pleased to have on an incredible artist, singer, songwriter, trumpet player. She does it all. <laughs> Jennifer Hartswick with a brand new album. Jennifer, thanks for yeah, coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. You know, it's like when I first saw the press release, you know, I knew you because uh, from playing with so many other musicians, mm -hmm. uh, which you have played with a lot of big name musicians. I get around. <laughs> <laughs> you are in demand for your for your vocals and your trumpet playing. But yeah. now you got a, you, now you got a solo album that came out, you know, in September. Yep with uh, something in the water. And I love the tracks on here. Thank you so much. It, Thank it's you. such a, a, a diverse album. You gotta tell me too, how did you come up with all these incredible, you know, very different songs? Because mm. like you and I were talking before we came in studio, it's not what I expected. I mean, I expected, <laughs> you know, all horn driven music and you know, yeah. and, and there's some of that. Sure, sure. But uh, it, it also shows your other influences. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, there's a lot going on in there at all at all times, um, and I've been really lucky to play with people from across, you know, all genres. But um, you know, I've always had a strong love of jazz and R&B and all that kind of stuff. And right. I started out as a trumpet player, not as a singer. Mm -hmm. um, and so I kind of think about music from an instrumental point before I think about it from a singer's perspective, yeah. which has its pros and cons. <laughs> um, but I think there's sort of a, a little of everything on this album. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I always sang as a kid, but I, I sort of around like 25 years old, I kind of thought, oh, I should probably sing more. You know, there's a, a more opportunity for me to work as, right. as a singer, as a, as a singer who plays trumpet, as a trumpet player who sings. Um, and so I started singing more, writing more lyrically. Um, and so I think, you know, this album is, a, is like a, it's a fun party. There's, there's moments of, um, you know, there's ballads, there's a super fun New Orleans vibe and mm -hmm. everything in between, so. Uh, I think my, one of my favorite tracks on there is Guilty. Yeah. Because, you know, I remember, you know, hanging out with my dad and he had, you know, the, of course, the whole Charlie Mingus collection. And, uh, and yeah, the yeah. upright yeah. bass. Yeah. And I'm like going, oh, you don't hear that much anymore. No, it's just me and uh, Christian McBride on upright bass, who is a hero of mine. Grammy uh, Award winner. Uh, seven times now? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Um, <laughs> and so that's actually a Randy Newman cover that uh, that I heard once and I thought, oh my God, this is the saddest song I've ever heard in my life. And I, I selfishly want to sing it. <laughs> this is a complete yeah. selfish move to put that song and on the album. you sound so good on there. Thank you. Yeah. Now, I found it also interesting with the, uh, with the original songs on this album mm -hmm. to where uh, the, the process that you went through on the retreat. Oh, yeah, yeah. To, to yeah. A, talk about that a little bit. Sure. So I write a lot with uh, my musical cohort, uh, Nick Casarino, who's an amazing guitar player, and we grew up together in Vermont. Um, and he has um, family friends who have um, a bed and breakfast in Vermont, and they leave for the winter because it's so cold up there, and so it's <laughs> vacant. Um, and it was mid-COVID, and no one had seen each other in forever, and no one was creating or playing or traveling or anything like that. And so he um, and his wife went to this bed and breakfast and posted up there for three months. Um, in the middle of winter with nine feet of snow and just after Christmas and invited me up to come write. And so I actually drove up, which took a very long time. Um, and we spent 10 days just writing in front of a fire. And it was, a, it was just a, a beautiful, it's a beautiful space anyway, but um, just to get to spend time with them and, and write. And that's how the, the album came about. Well, you know, and I like the, the analogy too in, in the press release to where it was like going, writing, laughing, crying, writing. Yeah, yeah, and cooking, <laughs> eating. There was a lot of yeah, eating. Cook, yeah. That, yeah. Cooking, I forgot that. We part. all love to cook, and so we, <laughs> everybody would take a night to cook, and and we cook and eat and cry and laugh and it, write. It sounds like a cathartic <laughs> process. It was very cathartic. You know, and and you know, I know that you know some of this is from your personal kind of memoir wise mm -hmm. with some of the songs, mm -hmm. and then some not. Right. And then uh, listeners kind of get to decide which. Yeah, I, um, hopefully you can't tell the difference. <laughs> hopefully the writing is cohesive enough that you can't tell the difference. Uh, but feel free to guess. <laughs> Not now, but <laughs> Not just, now. you yeah. know. Yeah. yeah, 
in the I grand scheme I, Well, of and I enjoy all the tracks. I got to bring up too, you were talking about singing, but you started out singing in a Vermont Children's Theater, I think at two years old. Yeah, yes. Wow, look who did his <laughs> research. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my family had a, a really cool uh, theater company for, for kids. Yeah. Um, that was nonprofit, totally free. No one got turned away, and it was a summer thing that they did for for two decades. Um, and my mom directed every show, and it had it grew from a very small, you know, in somebody's barn in the early '80s um, with 15 neighborhood kids who just needed something to do all summer. Right. To like 200 kids and two full-scale Broadway musicals a summer, and um, it really grew into something really cool that that gave kids an unbelievable you know, confidence and sense of belonging and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's that's how I spent every summer as a I kid. I think that's incredible yeah, too, really cool. it really nurtures the creative process with kids, which I think yeah. all kids need. Yeah, and it made everybody feel like um, it didn't matter how small your part was, it was equally as important as everything else. And it really instilled that in, in everybody, like a, a real sense of self. It was really cool. I love that. Well, and then you uh, picked up the trumpet at 10, but mm -hmm. like, did you feel like you had to coming from a family of musicians <laughs> and your grandmother played trumpet? Yeah, I didn't really stand a chance to do anything else uh, in life. Um, and my mom was the only woodwind player of, of her whole family. Yeah, she was the and odd so, one out. Yeah, she, she tried to get me to play clarinet and flute and saxophone and all that kind of stuff, which I did. Yeah, and piano. Um, and piano. And then my, my, I was gifted a trumpet at 10 and it was all over. And I thought, <laughs> well, this is loud and makes me the center of attention. I think I'll choose this. And I never looked uh, back. Now, you've got <laughs> to you tell dismay. viewers too, though, because, you know, of course I had to ask, what kind of trumpet do you play? And you do not tour with two trumpets, you have one trumpet. I just have one trumpet. It's a it's a French made um, Antoine Courtois um, that I love very much, and it was the first thing that I ever bought myself with my own money. My first trumpet ever, mm -hmm. um, and it's been with me twenty, going on twenty three years. Wow. Yeah, what and it's an the only one that I carry. And all my guitar player think friends think I'm weird. Well, because <laughs> all of us guitar players have many guitars. Yeah. And it, that's you're probably better off. I, I, as, as long as it doesn't break, I'm better off. Yes, and as long as Trey stays happy. Speaking of which, yeah. I got to bring this up to where. <laughs> speaking of life changes, you know, while you were going to college and everything, you decided to quit mm -hmm. college and leave, and then you mm -hmm. got a phone call. I did. Um, I had been in school for about three semesters and decided the the it was not for me. The place wasn't for me. Um, and I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew that I had to trust my gut and I packed up my stuff and I uh, got in my car and I drove back to Vermont about 10 minutes out of the driveway. My big Nokia brick cell phone <laughs> rang and uh, it was Trey Anastasio and he said, uh, what are you doing? I said, well, I just quit school 10 minutes ago. Uh, what are you doing? He said, well, I just started a band today. You want to be in it? <laughs> I said, yes? Question mark? Yeah, sure. He's like, oh, we're, we're at my house right now. How, how soon can you get here? I said, I'm four hours away. Oh, we'll still be here when you get here. And so I drove straight to his house, and he, they were in the middle of writing all these things that would become st just the staple catalog for our mm -hmm. band. Um, and that was also 23 years ago. <laughs> and yeah. you were a founding yeah. member, and yeah. two weeks later. Yeah, we were on tour two weeks later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of ridiculous. I know. You know. But it's like a real lesson in trust your gut, mm -hmm. which is um, the way that I, it gets harder as you get older, but I still try to dig down and, and see what the gut is saying. But you get to sing and trumpet mm -hmm. and, you know, do everything you love. Yeah. yeah. But then with back on tour with Trey, then you're going to have to wait and tour with your album right. <laughs> in the spring of next year. Yes. Yeah. In your yeah, spare time. In my spare time. It, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a maze, especially now, because every band is back on tour um, when, you know, because we couldn't be for the last year and a half. And so every single band, normally there's an ebb and flow to, well, these bands go out in the summer and fall, and these bands go out in the winter and spring, but everybody is, is mm -hmm. so anxious to get out all at the same time, which is what's creating, like, you know, bus shortages and staging right. shortages and staffing shortages well, and, and all and that I kind of the, stuff. And I think the fans and the listeners are so hungry. Right. To right. get back out and see live entertainment. Right. And then, but also sometimes, you know, you can't afford to go see live music five nights a week, so you got to pick and choose. Right. And, um, so with everything being back together, being back on the road, it's, um, it's a little bit of, uh, of, you just, you, you just got to try and make everything happen. And this, and my, my touring schedule has been set for 
really like the last year. And so um, releasing a record, we're just, we're gonna play in the holes. <laughs> That's all you can do. Yeah. It's good to be in demand. It, it's, it's good to be in demand. It's good to be back out working uh, right. and doing what we all love to do, so. Wow, that is so incredible. And I wanted to bring up also on the new album to where uh, you've got a lot of uh, guest artists and everything on mm -hmm. this too, like big mm -hmm. names that joined you on this album. So it yeah. wasn't just you. No, no, um, I got to, um, I got to play with my longtime friend, um, Nick Casarino on guitar. Um, my, I started a band when I was eight years old uh, <laughs> with the drummer who's on this album. Wow. So that's about as far back as I go with anybody. Yeah. He was and, and, seven. Unless I was he eight. would have been at the children's theater. The exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yep. So Connor Elms is on drums and then one of my musical heroes on bass, um, Christian McBride. Mm -hmm. Um, and then um, some amazing singers on it. Salise is on it. Um, Maureen Murphy from here is on it. Shira Elias. Um, there's a, we had such a blast, yeah. and we made it here in town, which um, we made it at Sound Emporium right. with uh, Joe Costa, who's just amazing, and Greg Majors. Um, and I just felt like you know I don't I don't get the opportunity to play in town very much because right. I'm on the road so much. Certainly. Um, home life is sort of like home. If I'm home for three days this month. I'd yeah. rather not work in those three days. Yeah, yeah you're figuring <laughs> so, out what you're going to cook, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Always. Um, and so I, it was important for me to make an album here to mm -hmm. sort of like, just like feel like I was part of the community because well, you, I don't really get a chance to. Well, today. I got to tell you too, listening to this album, uh, I automatically thought this has to be on vinyl and I know you have a really yeah. cool record with this. Yeah. Um, yes, I fought really hard to have vinyl pressed. Um, and it is available and it's a really, really, really beautiful, rich purple color, which I'm just like so <laughs> over the moon about. Um, it's like, like Prince would cover himself in these records. I love super that. Happy. Is that awesome? <laughs> I mean, it's like going, come on, it just stands out. Yeah, yeah. No, it's really beautiful. And I'm, I'm grateful that they wanted to do it. So um, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And besides on digital platforms and everything else and and uh, you've got one video out already. Yes. One music video, and you're gonna have, probably have one or two more. Yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll okay. see what the timing will allow for. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, Only Time Will Tell has a, has a video that, that we made prior to its release. So. Yeah, great song as well. Thank you. Just love it. Well, Thanks. I wanna make sure for our viewers that they know where to go for your website, for social media, for everything between your multiple tours, between sure. your solo album release, yeah. and everything else wonderful you have going on, and also maybe some recipes on food to have while listening to this great album. <laughs> you know what, that's something I haven't done. Let's do that. But you I'm, could intertwine I'm those, super Jennifer, into that. I'm just saying. In the spare time, on the tour, you know what, when I go to sleep on the tour bus, before every night, I'll just write little down notes. a little recipe. Here's yeah. a recipe. Yeah. yeah. But so where do, where do viewers need to go? Uh, JenniferHartswick.com um, is the easiest place. That's kind of houses all of all of the things. Um, you know, Jay Hartswick everywhere else on every other social media situation. But um, JenniferHartswick.com has has all the things. Yes. Yeah. An incredible album. You definitely, I tell you, you know, you know, add it to your playlist. You know, with the digital songs and everything else. But if you really want to get immersed in it. Get the vinyl. Yeah. You're gonna love that because the songs on here are just amazing, across many styles, and uh, you're gonna find several songs you love on here. I love them all. It is Jennifer Hartswick with a brand new album, Something in the Water. Be sure and get it. Catch her on tour with Trey, and also when she's finally on her solo <laughs> tour. Jennifer, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bones show.